So you just got that new resin printer and you're wondering, what's the best resin to use for 3D printing minis? Well that, my friends, is one of those questions that will give you probably about a dozen different answers from whoever you ask. And if you don't quit biting me, donkey. In this series of videos, we're going to keep things simple. We're going to focus on a single resin, or maybe a combination of resins, to help you decide what's the best resin for printing miniatures. And we're going to throw in a couple of tips and tricks along the way. Right, Hot Rod? Before we get started, I want to thank Luke from Mudlove.com. He is a subscriber of mine, and he was kind enough to send a custom, hand-thrown 3D Print Farm coffee mug that I enjoyed sipping on my coffee every morning. If you'd like to go check out some of his handcrafted items, head on over to Mudlove.com. Make sure and check them out. All right, let's get started with this resin. <laughs> What's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, that is correct. We are going to take a ride on the resin review train. This is the first in a series of episodes that review my favorite resin for 3D specifically printing these guys. 3D printing miniatures. I know a lot of you are beginners out there and you're probably wondering to yourself, what the heck, what kind of resin do I need to print the best miniatures that I can? Well, I'm going to hopefully go over some of the criteria that you need to look for in selecting a resin that will give you the best possible quality in your resin minis. So ultimately, there are about four things that you need to look for in selecting a resin for 3D printing miniatures. Number one is you want a resin that is going to give you the best possible resolution. Check this out. This is Mary Iris from Loot Studios. And as you can see, the resolution is just unbelievable from the chain mill of her outfit to the hair and her ears. That's what you want. Resolution, number one, super important. Number two, durability. This is a 32 millimeter mini. When someone rolls that D20 and they go berserk and knock this guy off the table, you wanna walk away without any missing limbs or missing weaponry. So durability, number two. Number three, paintability. Yes, that is a word, paintability. Look it up, no, don't look it up. Your resin prints need to be able to accept paint. Not all resins readily accept paint. Sometimes you'll be spraying a primer on there and it just looks kinda, it pulls up and, and ick. Yeah, you want them to be able to accept paint. You want a resin that is acceptable, that is accepting of paint, yes. And finally, number four is, this is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, is cost. You want your resin to be economical, but you also want great prints. So, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a balance. So, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in this video. So, without further ado, the first resin on our resin review journey is from 3DRS. 3D Resin Solutions, this is 3DRS. Fast Plus. Let's go take a look. Okay guys, the first resin that we are going to take a look at in this series for resins for your 3D miniatures is a resin called 3DRS Fast Plus Cool Gray. And it's by a company called 3D Resin Solutions. Uh, all of their resins are made here in the United States. I believe they are in Illinois. You can uh, purchase this resin through their website. This is great if you're running a print farm and you're cranking out these miniatures. Let's say you're selling them on Etsy or you have your own shop because you can get them in the one kilogram bottle all the way up to a two gallon bucket. Two gallons of resin shipped to your door from these folks. And I, I really like the folks at 3DRS because I had a lot of questions concerning the resin and the exposure time, and they're really, really quick to answer uh, all of my questions. 
You can, in fact, the 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 3D RS Fast Cool Gray. They actually make another color called uh, 3D RS Fast Azurite, which looks like it almost um, has more blue, uh, has more of, more of a blue tint to it. So either of either of the two, I just happen to get the Cool Gray, which I think is really really awesome. What I want to do, uh, without further ado, we are going to head on over to one of my favorite sites for minis. This is a, a paid site, but for uh, for the price, you, you get a ton of miniatures. Loot Studios. I know I've talked about these guys in the past, but this month is just out of this world amazing. This is Granny's Prophecy. This is based around the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale you can see mr hansel and miss gretel here and he you have all of the the heroes down here mary arsis you have thievius and then you have all of these creatures as well as there's a couple of the witches in there that we're going to print today i really like loose studios because they they're, they're they try to stay on the cutting edge of of what people are asking for and a lot of folks are asking for the busts, which is huge, and you they're really, really, really nice to paint. I have not printed this Hag's House, but this is one of their biggest terrain pieces yet. This is a huge house. You can see the characters in, in, in this house that the, that the roof comes off, and you can actually play your game uh, directly inside of the Hag's House, which is just super cool. Lots of parts to print, but hey, it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go over and head over to Chichu Box. I already have the one of the hags pulled in. And as you can see, she is super detailed, super creepy. I mean, I wouldn't want to be stealing candy from this lady's house anytime soon. Uh, let me get her positioned on the bill plate. I am actually using my frozen sonic mini and let's take a look at the settings really quick uh, for the print so my layer heights at 50 microns uh, my exposure time is around two and a half seconds on the frozen sonic mini and I'll, I'll leave this up on the screen if you guys that have a frozen sonic mini want to uh, write these numbers down you can pause the video and uh, jot these numbers down and if not you can head on over to uh, 3D Resin Solutions. They have a settings tab in here where uh, they have conveniently put all of the the most most popular machines here. And in fact, for their different types of resin, they have, in fact, we're gonna be looking at their Hero Resin in, in, later on uh, in, in my series because it is a, it's a, a super high impact resin. But as you can see, there's a standard resin, they have a fast resin, and you can pull your numbers right off of here for whatever uh, printer that you happen to be using. And if it's not listed here, you know, you can head on over and uh, send them a quick note. They're, again, they're really uh, responsive on answering any of your questions. Or I'm going to leave a link in the description below uh, for my uh, resin exposure test. Uh, make sure and check that out and because that's helped a whole lot of folks. I know it's helped me try to, to try to determine what is the best settings for my resin. So again, let me bounce over back into Chi2 box and let's go ahead and print this creepy looking hag here. Okay, as you see, I am removing the hag using one of these removable build plates. Have you, if you have not picked up a set of these removable magnetic build plates for your resin printer, you guys really need to do that because you can snap these off, um, pop your print off, pop the plate back on. You don't even have to remove the build plate. And I really like these. These particular ones I'm using are from Wham Bam. Uh, really easy to put on. In fact, if, um, if you have a Frozen Sonic Mini, uh, any of the any of the Elegoo machines, I know that they they make a wide variety of these removable build plates uh, for your particular machine. But I really like these, and as you can see, the resolution is super high on these. I love the, the supports. Whoever's doing the supports at Loot Studios is just doing a fantastic job in uh, 
in using supports. And as you can see, this this um, this resin here. Let me pour some into the vat here. As you can see, the viscosity of this particular resin, yeah, you know, it's it's not super thin like a let's say like a clear uh, resin from Sriatech. A little bit thinner than pancake syrup. Uh, but I, you know, it it pours really nice. The odor is very low. It almost has a sweet smell, but it not so much acrid like um, something that would burn your nose. But it, it's not the, the the odor is not bad at all. So let's go and head outside, and I'm going to show you the models that were printed with the 3DRS Fast. Okay guys, you've had an opportunity to look at the 3DRS Fast Plus Resin. Let's see how it handles our matrix here. Number one, resolution. I mean, come on guys. Uh, I mean, you, you saw all the models. It, I would give 3DRS Fast Plus, from a resolution standpoint, a solid nine to 10. Durability. I'm call me crazy, but I am going to drop this bust and I'm about three feet from the floor. A three foot drop from the floor, no missing ears, no missing limb. Well, yeah, she doesn't have limbs because she's a bust. So yeah, uh, yeah, no, uh, nothing, nothing wrong with this model uh, that was dropped. Number three, paintability. Yeah, I snuck in a model on you, didn't I? Uh-huh. Another one of Loot Studio's awesome models from the past that I just had to print with the 3D RS Fast Plus, and I have painted a gray primer on this. As you can see, it accepted primer very, very well. Awesome. So number four is cost. Again, remember we were going to talk about cost being uh, subjective. From a cost standpoint, uh, currently the 3D RS Fast Plus is going to run about $49 per kilogram. Now that price will go down when you buy, let's say, a case of nine. You know, that drops around $5, $4 to $5-ish a bottle. And I believe when you go to the two-gallon size, it's going to drop even more. So if you're running a 3D print farm, no, I'm 3D print farm. No, you know what I mean. If you're running a 3D print farm, and you're printing lots of these miniatures, uh, you're going to save some money by buying in bulk. But again, remember, if you get a crummy resin, and I've used lots of crummy resins, and I've went through bottles of the stuff, of uh, prints that have failed, and they look horrible, and let's say from the resolution standpoint, from the durability standpoint, these models just do not stand up, with this kind of thing, you really get what you pay for. But since I want to be fair and square all the way across the board, I'm going to knock off a couple points for cost. But that drops it to an 8. So I give 3D Resin Solutions 
super high marks all the way across the board. I think you guys are going to like it. I want to let you guys know I'm not receiving any compensation for this. I wanted to do a fair and square look at a lot of different resins across the spectrum and give you my recommendations of the best resins that I feel are great for 3D printing your miniatures. Once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I would be glad to answer them. And hey, if you have a particular resin in mind that you want me to review, put them in the comments below and I will pick up a bottle and we'll print some stuff with it. In fact, next time we do a review, I'm going to pick a different model maker. If you have any suggestions for model makers that you want to see some of their minis done in a particular resin, let me know as well. So again, I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope to see you again. Again? I hope to see you again soon. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you and I hope to see you again soon here on 3D Print Farm. Bye now. So you just got your new resin printer and you're wondering what's the best resin to use for 3D printing miniatures? I got a donkey chewing on my arm over here. You don't believe me? He didn't hurt. He's just nibbling on my watch. Yeah. Isn't that right, Hot Rod?